The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world. For the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Bless 
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose people are knit together in one holy church, the body of Christ our Lord, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for today is taken from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading for today is taken from the 21st chapter of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. 
And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We stand to honor the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, Already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel is an amazing story from the ministry of Jesus. As Jesus went about the countryside of Galilee, he gave his followers signs of who he is and what he came to do. Beginning with turning water into wine, the first of his signs, the gospel says, continuing with miracles of healing 
and culminating with the event in today's gospel in which Jesus does the unimaginable, the inconceivable, something almost unbelievable. He brings his friend back from the dead. It is a story with a wonderful, joyful, happy ending. But the story that ends that way begins with a lot of questions, uncertainty, disappointment, and doubts. Jesus' friend Lazarus, the man who had died, had two sisters. One of them, Mary, meets Jesus on the road as he makes his way to visit with the family after Lazarus had died. Now, we know that her grief was fresh and intense, so we can cut her a little slack if she lacks some tact and politeness. She greets Jesus without even saying, Shalom, just these words. If only you had been here, Jesus, my brother would not have died. Way to lay on the guilt trip, Mary. But you can understand her feelings. She needed Jesus a few days earlier when Lazarus was only sick, before it was too late. Jesus could have done something then, and he wasn't there. And Jesus responds to Mary's disappointment by weeping. Oh, great, the one person who can help them, who they believe has the power over sickness and death, who they were hoping would bring some life, is now reduced to tears. It was enough that he wasn't there when they needed him. Now all he can do is grieve after he gets there. Couldn't he who have opened the eyes of the blind man save this man from dying? The crowds began to wonder too about Jesus. Their comments reflect their own disillusionment about him. They had seen him heal others. Why couldn't he have done the same thing for his friend? Maybe Jesus was just all talk. Their reaction is reasonable. Jesus is too little, too late for all of them. They've lost their faith in him. And then we have Martha, Lazarus' other sister. She was in no mood to cooperate with Jesus when he asked for the grave to be opened. It's going to smell bad, she said. She doesn't want the embarrassment of such a scene to make her look bad in front of her neighbors. You can't blame her. What was the point? Everyone at the beginning of the story is unable to see God's presence or purpose in the situation. Lazarus was not the only one in the story who was tightly bound up in the grip of death. Mary and Martha and all the other observers were bound up by their own grief and frustration, their doubt and their questions. They can't see what God is about to do. Jesus had disappointed them. He wasn't there when they needed him, and now he seems powerless to help. This is all kind of sad and makes us want to get to the happy ending of the story as soon as possible, to the part where Jesus says, Lazarus, come out, and the dead man comes back to life. Untie him and let him go, Jesus said. That's the amazing part of the story that we love. And we'll get there. We will all get there. Together with all those who have gotten there before us. The names we will list later in our service, the names of the people in your hearts and minds this day, those who have died, those who have died, especially in the last year, they are the ones who, like Lazarus, have been released from this grip. 
They have arrived at that happy place where there are no more tears. They are free from the grave clothes that bound them tightly to this earth, and we will get there too. But we remain here for now with the tears. It is important to hear and to feel the part of this story before Lazarus walked out of the tomb because that's where we are right now. That's the point where we must learn to follow Jesus, to trust him, and to rely on his love and his promises. We walk a broken road that is not always easy. It's a way that is not always clear and well-defined because we are on this side of the grave. We are not in that happy place in heaven. We are not at our Easter, All Saints Day, resurrection ending. Not yet. We live now in a tight grip of this unholy trinity, the devil, the world, and our own sinful self. They wrap us up in their brutal embrace. They choke us and steal our life away. You can feel it. You know their influence. There are those moments when we can't see what God is doing, when we want to say, it would be nice if God would show up. It would be great if I could sense the presence of God and if he would do something for me, it would help me to know what to do and what to say. If only you had been there, Jesus, in those moments of doubt and frustration when I really needed you. Oh, sure, there's a happy ending. There are promises for heaven, but that feels like a long ways out and far away, and it is so unknown. What about now? What about now? That's when the cross makes all the difference. That is where your relationship with Jesus matters. Do you know that when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, we're told in the gospel later on that this actually triggered his own death. After all the hugs and kisses at the gray side when Lazarus was unbound and reunited with his family and his friends, the enemies of Jesus were off in a corner planning to crucify him. That's where the whole plan was hatched, right there at Lazarus' grave. There was no happy ending for Jesus. On the cross, he was reduced to human tears, to suffering, to death. He was greatly disturbed when he suffered there for us, and he did not, and he did that so that you and I could live. He marked you with that cross so that you would know that this life that he accomplished is for you. He already released you from the grip of that deadly trio in baptism when you were claimed by the Holy Trinity. And he is meeting you here today as one who understands, who has walked this way himself and who gives you everything today that he has to give, which amounts to everything you need. What about this journey right now? Well, this is where the church, the community of believers makes a difference. Last, last Sunday, we celebrated the church, Christ church, our church. We are here to walk with each other, to be side by side with each other. We are here to join in this struggle. We are here not as ones who have all the answers, but as those who are going the same way, who feel the same disappointments and who cling to Jesus because 
we all have the same need for him. There is a voice that is calling us. There is a voice from heaven which is actually not far away and not a long ways off, but this heavenly voice is right here. In the reading today from Revelation, we hear this voice which says, now, now the dwelling of God is with us. Now, in word and sacrament, God reaches down to us and we touch base with heaven. Right here in this community of faith, in the body of Christ, where we receive the means of grace, here is where we put one foot in heaven's open door while one foot limps along here on earth. And here and now, by grace, through faith, we begin to see that in spite of all <clears throat> of all of that that tries to wrap its deadly arms around us, there is one who circles us in love and will not let us go, who will pull us closer and closer to himself. And that is Jesus. And his presence here for you is the sign of who he is and what he does. And what he does for us is at the same time unimaginable and inconceivable and thankfully by the power of the Holy Spirit very believable. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. It is not too late for you to add a name to our commemoration, which we'll, just, we'll do in just a few minutes. Feel free to move about during the hymn, grab a card, put your name on it. Cami will collect them, and if you have them with you in your seats, you can hand them to her and she'll bring them forward. You may also, if you'd like, grab a candle, and Chris will be up front here if you would like to light a candle and place it by the font in memory of those who've gone before us.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, In our prayers today, we will remember again our sister Cheryl Morelli, who is battling cancer at home. We will also remember our sister Pat Randall, who is recovering from surgery. We will pray for Trish Kraft and her family at the death of her sister-in-law, Debbie. And we will also include a prayer on behalf of Nick and Beth Hebner, who received the gift of a son. In fellowship with the saints of every time and place, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and all of God's creation. Eternal God, the Alpha and Omega, dwell in your church and in your people and fill us with your spirit that we may proclaim your saving deeds to a thirsty world. Hear us, O God. Ruler of the nations, help us make wise decisions for the good of all, and elect leaders who will use their authority to further justice and peace in the world. Hear us, O God. God of love, we thank and praise you for family, for children, for grandchildren, and today we especially thank you on behalf of Nick and Beth as they welcome a son into their lives. Surround them with your love and care. Hear us, O God. God of compassion, those who weep and mourn wait upon you. Especially today we pray for Cheryl and Pat, for Trish and her family, and those we name before you now silently. Be with them in their pain and sorrow. Wipe away their tears and give them hope in your victory over death. Hear us, O God. Lord of the feast, bless this assembly and all who seek you. Nourish us richly with your word and sacrament that we may be signs of your living presence in the world. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. On this day, we remember with thanksgiving those who have gone before us with the sign of faith. They were created by God to offer him praise forever. Redeemed by Jesus, God's Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit through baptism, where God gave them new life. As such, they were created by God. They have been nourished in the company of his people through the Lord's Supper and the Word. And in his mercy, God has summoned them to his presence, that they may continue in joyful service to him forever. We especially remember this day, Errol Bartz, Ruth Bartz, Debbie DeMars, Jordan Clark, Harvey Lindgren, Eugene Berg, Jason, Tony Henneman, Jeffrey Compton, Evie Reed, Muriel Anderson, Jim Johansson, Marty Rigwold, Gary O'Neill, Dennis Lennis, Myrtle Anderson, Regina Bart, Mary Kay, Patricia Smith, T. 
Tim McKeon, Marlon Bergendahl, Kurt Heitschmidt, Lewis Matthew, Marv Ron, Drew Latecki, Mark Gibbon, Rubel Opsel, Ron Holm, Mickey Child Carlson, and all those who are in our hearts and minds this day. Blessed are they that die in the Lord from now on. Let us pray. In joyful expectation for the resurrection of the body to life, we remember before you, O Lord, all those who have gone before us in faith. We offer thanksgiving for the gift of faith, and we hold fast to the certainty of your promises. May their memory among us be blessed, and may we follow their footsteps of faith to your eternal presence in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. The home of God is with us, and he will dwell with us. Thanks and praise to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him you have made your dwelling with us, and through faith you give us life. Therefore, with saints and angels, and with all the whole Christian church in heaven and on earth, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Christ in the night in which he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
For our communion today, you can follow the direction of our usher forward to the cart to uh, get an empty cup. You can receive your wine here, or the bread here, and then receive your wine here, and return your cup uh, at the tables on your right. There's also non-alcoholic wine and gluten-free wafers available at the cart.
glory of the body of Christ for you. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us, both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Christ lives in you. to Grace of God today. I have a few announcements for you. First of all, you know that Bethlehem is coming. It's less than a month away. There are a number of wish list needs for things that are posted on what we call around here the funeral door, but what it really is is that door to the outside there in the entryway. 
And uh, you can take one of those with you. Some, there are some new things today that have photos and specifics about what we are looking for. The idea is to remove them from the wall so that we know that you are going to uh, donate those things, and that would be really great. We have this week more advertisements out. Perhaps you saw some signs on the streets. Um, we have a Facebook event invite that you can share on your Facebook page if you are on Facebook. I know a number of you um, must have already done that because I could see that there were lots of shares of it. But please do that if you are on Facebook because that just you know, extends our invitation that much further. And we really would like to be able to give this gift to the community and to really reach out and let people see our church here and have some interaction with our neighbors. And there's so many good things that can come from it. So please help us to spread the word about Bethlehem experience on Saturday, December 4th. It will be from 4 to 6 p.m. You're all invited to come back in here with donuts and coffee um, for our adult Bible study. We're talking about the basics of the Christian faith and life, especially as understood by Lutherans. Um, but much of this is common belief, and uh, so I invite you to come. Today we're going to be looking at how does God connect to me? And is that the right question? Maybe there's a better question. Um, and so uh, please come and join us for that discussion. We have Thanksgiving Eve worship, uh, the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving at 7 o'clock. It's on November 24th. We have a new... Um, place for us to collect things, and Kathy's going to say something about it. Not this one, you're going to do the next one. I'm sorry. Okay, we are going to do, we're going to collect things for Hope for the Journey Home, which is the shelter just right here in our neighborhood, and they have some specific needs um, that they have shared with us. They're listed in your worship folder. We'll also have them on our website, and so we ask that you bring these items to worship with you on that Wednesday evening, and we'll collect them and present them. Uh, as our offering, our Thanksgiving offering as a congregation on that night, okay? The next thing is the Christmas tree with tags, and that is what Kathy is going to speak to. You may have noticed when you came in this morning that there is a Christmas tree all lit up with lots of pretty tags on it. For years, we have supported um, the Holiday Hope program through Community Thread in Stillwater. We adopt families and provide gifts. We've done gifts up until last year, and then they asked that we do gift cards, which is also a benefit to us as a congregation because Rick denison has got a lot of gift cards. Um, how it all works is that you can take as many tags off the tree as you would like to. They're all in increments of $25. We do get a wish list from our families, and this year we are sponsoring two single adults and three families with children. And so we provide a certain amount of uh, gift cards for gifts and then also for groceries for them. Um, when you take your gift cards, you can check with Rick, you can get them at the store wherever you want. Attach the tag to the gift card when you bring it back and put it in the basket by the tree because then we'll combine them and make sure everybody's gift card or tags have been fulfilled. We need to have them back here no later than Sunday, December 5th because I have to deliver them to Community Thread and then they deliver them to the families. So help yourself to the tags, and Merry Christmas already. So that date is a little sooner than normal, so just heads up on that. We need them by, um, as Kathy said, December 5th. Um, also, while you're buying the gift cards for that, that project, um, Rick also has gift cards to use for Christmas gifts. And that script program is of great benefit to us here because we get a portion of all those gift cards uh, back to the congregation. So. Um, I know Rick will be happy to help you with that. During Advent, we have evening prayer here at Grace of God. Last year, you may recall, we just did a, we didn't have in-person evening prayer. We just did it um, online for live stream. But we will gather for evening prayer beginning on December 1st. Our theme is Welcoming Christ. And um, it will be a time of quiet prayer, about 30-minute service. Um, we'll have candles and beautiful music. 
and I encourage you to come. It's, I think, really important during Advent when our minds and our lives are just going at a you know, breakneck speed, right? And I think it's really important and beneficial for us to be able to gather, to quiet down, light some candles, hear some good news, and remember what all of this is about as we prepare to welcome Christ. So that begins December 1st, Wednesday, those three Wednesday evenings in Advent at 7 o'clock. Anybody else have anything? All right, enjoy your fellowship time, donut and coffee. We'll have Bible study beginning in about 10 minutes. Thank you.